Let's call to order the uh, Finance Committee meeting of the Ogdensburg Bridge and Port Authority for July 7th. Our uh, business item is to review the May 2022 financials. And uh, Patty, you've provided us with a set of documents, our, our standard end of month material. Would you uh, touch on things that you think are uh, highlights of that? Very good. Um, the starting with the statement of financial position or balance sheet, whichever, um, you'll notice our cash reserves are at 1.2, but as per the footnote, almost all of that is restricted money. And that was part of the auditor's uh, request for response on those items where the bank account is more than $250,000 for the FDIC insured amount. Our accounts receivable regular are $225,000 at the end of May. 93.45% of that open AR is either current or one to 30 days. So we're, we're back in the pink on on collecting our uh, accounts receivable as they can come in. Our accounts receivable wind turbine project is at $821,000 at the end of May. We have, re we have billed another six to 700,000 and we've gotten approximately $709,000 back from the project. Our fixed assets you'll notice have gone up as has our uh, depreciation because our construction and progress has gone way down. The bridge repair project, the Malls F project and another project have been moved from construction and progress into being a fixed asset now. So when one goes up, the other goes down. Our accounts payable, our accounts payable is broken into three sections. Our retirement is at 169. All project accounts payable is at 63. Our accounts payable regular is at a million, of which five to 600,000 of that belongs to the wind turbine expenses. The Auburn Crane at the end of May was owed 275,000 OMLCs portion of the wind turbine was 216,000. And then there are other various um, bills that were, were due for the wind turbine. So actually we're not in bad shape on the payables either. Are there any questions on the balance sheet? No, not me. No. Sam, okay. And we'll move to the budget to actual for May. Our bridge revenue is down. Our rental income on the bridge is spot on, but the bridge traffic income started slowly in April at 107 moved to 155 in June. The 155 in June is only off six or seven thousand dollars from the budget. So we're we're not we're creeping back to where we wanted to be on this assumption of 60% return to normal on the bridge traffic. Our airport parking income is more than double what was budgeted. We had $8,000 actual versus a budget of $3,000 in both April and May. I was quite surprised to see that, um, that our parking income has increased as much as it has. Our fuel sales, still much stronger than we budgeted. Our industrial park revenue is down a little bit. Uh, we have one um, 
tenant who did not renew his lease and he sent us a check to settle all of his old um, outstanding receivable, but he dated it in July. So we haven't been able to cash the check yet. We can cash it next week. Um, the Marine Terminal, the overage that we have, the extra money that we, we received was the new tarps that we have down below as expenses for the salt piles. So they have been billed in May and that was approximately $10,200 of the 11,000. The railroad revenue, I completely forgot during doing the budget. There are many easements that we give for slick networks, um, some solar people, national grid, along the side or underneath the railroad and very often you'll find that things go along never even thought to add those to our budget but we've got some extra money there and the wind turbine revenue is really just a timing issue um, we invoiced much more in may than we had expected to to have come in in may but that's purely timing and at the end of the project by october that will all uh, even itself out. Bridge expenses, our salary and employee benefits, of course, are based on the number of um, employees we have. We've not hired the director of operations and we had budgeted for a new general mechanic to replace Jimmy who retired and neither of those have yet been hired. Uh, maintenance expense, in maintenance expense on the bridge, it includes our fuel deliveries for the gas tank right out here. And we had a fuel delivery that we hadn't expected in the budget. Uh, the bridge maintenance expense is down at the moment. The, the, uh, the lads are out on the bridge now. They were finishing the exterior of the White House here that we now see is, is absolutely lovely. Utility expenses were up just a little. General expenses are down. Legal expenses are down. We had a credit that was given to us by our attorneys back in 2018 that wasn't taken until this year. So we will continue to have uh, a negative balance on legal expenses for another month or two, maybe. Airport. Salary expense, we didn't hire the fourth person at the airport until June after the one employee moved over here. Uh, of course, benefits are based on hires. Fuel sale expense, we purchased more and paid much more for fuel. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, if you look up above our revenue, of 91 year to date is not covering yet the fuel sales. So we'll have to watch that a bit. Uh, under general expenses, one of the biggest reasons that we're over budget is MAPCO hired more staff. They have another at least half person out there that I don't think we had budgeted for. So they're already going to be over budget for what we anticipated. How many did we budget for? two and a half and for a while we had three and a half but now we have one employee that's gone to contour so it may okay. it may come back in line we may have to look at that because they've never had three and a half since they've come back to work we'll have to look at that well we're talking about that the way you stated it, at least the way I heard it, is if they hire somebody, they do it on their own without any discussion with us? I believe so. Hmm. That's, I don't like I, I, that. I heard that too. I, I, <laughs> do they talk to you before they hire? Well, I know they replaced, they replaced Jim with Jim. Mm. Um, 
but prior to COVID, they had three full-time and two part-time. And they brought back three full-time. And I thought we had a half-time or a part-time person. I, I'll check. No. But they're, they're also putting in overtime that I didn't expect that they were putting in. Okay. Their, their salary line is, is fairly high on their income and expense statement, higher than I would have expected. We might want to go look at that contract. I don't, I don't like the idea of them just adding people and we're paying for it without any discussion with us beforehand. I'm anxious to see. I'm not saying it's not justified. I'm just saying right, we right. should be in on a discussion before they actually go ahead and do that. Unless in the contract it says they can just do that. Right. Uh, we can pull the contract too. Um, am I wrong or? Oh, I would agree. Chris, what do you think? I, I certainly think we ought to be involved unless uh, the contract prohibits it and then we have to look at it the next time the contract comes in. Two or three, five years? Three or five years, I believe. It was a 10 year mm -hmm. originally. Another four. And we haven't extended it per se. We haven't. No. no. Does no. it have an automatic renewal? No. no, I don't believe so. No, we have to. The only thing that has to happen in that contract is we have to pay off the equipment, mm -hmm. the loan on the equipment. And how close are we to that? Uh, is the low 100 yet? No. No? No. We're getting there, but no. The uh, marine terminal expense I have to check on. Oh, I missed the industrial park. We budgeted, we're putting more of the economic director's salary in than we budgeted. So this may change over time as he gets more involved in other areas. <laughs> Nice going, nice going, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> Adam. Um, under utility expense, this is gross, not the net after reinvoicing to tenants. Um, and the salary on the port, I have to check. There may be some wind turbine in with the marine terminal expenses. And under general expenses, OMLC's portion of the wind turbine belongs in wind turbine, so that um, huge overage will go down where it belongs. And under the wind turbine expense, I believe we only budgeted for one crane from Auburn Crane, and we have two. No, we wouldn't budget for one crane. Just to do it. Okay, then we missed we missed Excuse something me. when we budgeted for no i have to look at it because the wind it, turbine expenses that might just an error there but you, yeah you can't run a wind turbine project on one crane okay um so we will steve and i will look into the general expenses on the wind turbine so do you think those expenses are overstated it should be a little bit close to budgeted. I mean, I mean, year to date, we're off by 144,000. Well, well, it could be timing. It, it, yeah, to, to speak to Patty's thing, I mean, and also um, what we're asked to do sometimes is beyond what we've estimated. So, so what we when we put the budget together, we have a general idea of how it's going to run, and and some of this is. The reimbursement is buried in there, yet it comes out as an expense, like when Patty and I are talking about cranes. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to go back and look at it, but we could have easily have used more crane time than kind of what the way we thought of that. But when we do that, 
it's always reimbursed by the following month. Yeah, and also well. it's also authorized by the, the client. Right. So um so it, it it's tough to keep track of all of that in the in the scope of things. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are there any questions on the budget to action? So looking down at the bottom line, operating income, net gain and loss, year to date. We're fairly close to where we thought we would be. Mm -hmm. And we don't have all of the other grants and um, programs that were there when COVID was in place. Right. So we're getting a truer picture, as Chris said in the beginning of the meeting, of what we're looking at for um, our revenues and the offsetting expenses. And, uh, yes. I'm headed on to a different topic. I, I don't know that we've really resolved or that we have any, any more discussion to have about the current I'm topic. Good. Yeah, there are no more PPP monies, right. which is the big thing. And we are on our last airport grant, the yes. ARPA grant. Um, they are now asking for, as soon as it's published, it goes into effect. They're not just asking us now to have a copy of the invoice on hand in case they'd like to see it. They're going back to, we want the invoice you paid, but now they want to see the check that paid it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Apparently there's, there's been ex instances of expenses being put in before possibly the, the airport has paid it, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Sure. Um, so we now have more. It's not just us though. Oh no, no, this is, this is across the sure. board. This mm -hmm. is not, personal to us the FAA has put this out and um, McFarland Johnson expected that that would be on their website around the 2nd of July so if it's up there then we have to start making sure that everything's been paid and we can prove it as we submit. Okay. So on, on uh, some of the things that were discussed as we as you went over that Patty I wonder Stephanie uh, we've got a gap between cost of fuel and revenue from fuel. Uh, are we charging when we sell fuel, are we charging enough to represent yes. the increased costs these days? Yes. Um, the, the price changes when we get a load of fuel in. Um, basically, the uh, the taxes and so on for fuel is about a dollar more per gallon than the price of the fuel. So fuel is four dollars a gallon, taxes and so on are five dollars a gallon, or I'm sorry, taxes and so on are a dollar a gallon, so it costs us five dollars mm -hmm. a gallon, I charge six. Mm -hmm. Now uh, I think there'll be a little bit of an adjustment with SkyWest and their fuel because we had to take a delivery for Sky West. They'd asked us to take their um, their inventory down as far as possible and we did that and now um, we just right before they left we had to take a load for them. So I think our expenses in June for fuel will not be as high mm -hmm. as our revenue. Mm -hmm. So that should try to equal out. I, th I think once we we settle with Sky West, we'll have a better idea because now we're selling only but our fuel. But you won't be turning over that fuel from Sky West because they won't hurt here. Right. We will have to pay them for the fuel that they have left in right. the tank. And it'll take us longer to turn it over because SkyWest isn't using it. I was told today by one of the lads that Contour is indeed taking they the fuel, which taking. we didn't okay. expect. Um, so that will that will is help it the us. same fuel? Yeah. Yes. It goes it's in the same, same tank. tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So they are, oh, that's unexpected. Yes. 
it's unexpected. Well, good. They, they've taken four fuel, four, I think, four. So, in seven days, if that answers my question. I was going to say, yeah, <laughs> better than we thought it was. I, so. I, think, I think toward the end of, uh, when we finish up June's, mm -hmm. we'll have a better picture of, of the fuel situation. Well, transitions always produce funny numbers, don't they? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes they do. And we, we work very, we did take more fuel deliveries because we were trying to work down the, um, the Sky West fuel inventory. Mm -hmm. And um, once again, a lot of confusion. And they said, well, okay, order a load of fuel for us. And so we did, I think it came in on the 30th of June <laughs> or something mm -hmm. that they paid for. So I think mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see it, uh, a big change but in July, in probably. Yeah, yeah, in, in July. In July because we will pay them sometime this month probably right to settle whatever fuel was left in the in the tank that belonged to them and we will be paying they will be billing us at their rate instead of our rate which right. is a lot cheaper than we can we can get it but the fuel will then be ours to or other GAs. Pardon? Or GAs. Yes. yes, other GAs, yes. And then we can sell it at our rate. Any other questions there? I saw you inhale, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about you the uh, thinking. I was thinking about the just the fuel thing on your side. It's apparently we can buy fuel cheaper through anybody. Okay, not no, Contour um, wouldn't have on American rig or whatever. Um, they are. I mean, um, must hurt. <clears throat> they're they're working on it. Originally, they said to us that they're not going to be taking fuel here, so it doesn't matter. And then on Friday, they came to me and said, "We think maybe we we have to work some sort of a deal for fuel." I said, "Well, I've got a great idea." I said, you maintain the fuel, in, you know, you bring in the fuel inventory and let us sell your fuel and we'll pay for, pay the cost for your fuel and um, we'll only charge you an into plane fee. Oh, no, 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 we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. Okay. And they said, well, can, you know, you're giving us a break on fuel. I said, yeah, retail. Either we make a deal or we don't, or, or they pay the going rate. And unfortunately, fuel was high, aviation fuel was high in New England from across the country. Mm. Wow. And um, yeah, we can just, but we can, yeah, okay, so we can, we can't, we'll just keep doing what we're doing right now. Right, and unless they they come up with something to help us, yeah, help that's fine. We'll work. Oh yeah. Patty, you mentioned the issue that the accountants had brought up about uh, uh, FDIC coverage mm -hmm. of deposited amounts. Do you have any uh, plan or options developed to address that? Well, I reached out to all of our three financial institutions. Two out of the three collateralize the hmm. over $250,000. So on two institutions, we're fine. Mm -hmm. On the third institution, we, we have a compensating balance that we must keep, and I believe it's $200,000. Mm -hmm. We have not been touching the additional monies that we put in just in case of interest increases during the month. We have to pay, uh, we pay $75,000 a month to pay three loans, and then we just put a little extra in, and that's in our compensating balance. That's what's brought us over the 250. So in a in discussion with our auditors, we decided what we would do is talk with the institution and say, can we move some of this overage to one of the loans? Sure. And pay some principal so that 
we stay within say 200 and 250, then we're still insured, but we still have our compensating balance in the account. We've just allowed that to grow and nobody's ever said anything to us. Oh, you know, you have too much money in your account, we could do. So I will approach the institution and say, what can we do here? That sounds, we bring like, it. sounds like they'll be able to work that out. Yeah, yes, they will because <laughs> they get something for that. Um, and it's about $100,000 we have in there that we could move against principal on either the loan or the line of credit. Great. Well, that covers the questions I, I have about finances. Are there any others? So that probably takes care of the business for the meeting. We don't have any other such matters. Um, I have a, another conflict on our regular last Monday of the month. And I wonder whether uh, Thursday would work. I'm looking at calendar too. <laughs> this is Ju July. We would be talking the 25th of July normally, right? I'm going to get to a calendar, David. You want to move it to the 28th, which works for me. Yeah, that that's I, I what I'd like to do. On the 25th, perfect so. time to have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that we want. <laughs> so the 28th would be ideal. Oh, really? It does work? Yeah. 28th at four? Yeah, that would be great by me. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it, it sounds to me as if that's workable. So let's reschedule mm -hmm. that meeting for uh, Thursday the 28th at 4 p.m. I have a grandson who last, I think December, graduated from a music program. And he is now playing professionally on Monday night, the 25th, in somewhere south of Albany, Chatham. Oh, Chatham. very nice. So I have to be in Chatham on the 25th. <laughs> That's lovely. Good. So I appreciate it. Thank you for doing that. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Aye, 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 aye. <laughs>